So toileting, I have to get to toileting. This is a huge, huge thing for a lot of parents of young children, and it requires self-monitoring. So in the process of learning to toilet, children are learning to self-monitor. So they're exercising their saliency network, all right? And they're deciding not to be passive in the default mode and just like, oh yeah, now there's poop. But instead, to be active in this executive and go to the potty and use it, okay? There's a great book on this on Amazon. You can get it, Toilet Awareness by Sarah Mudry, who also has Studio June. You can go to her website. Tons of great stuff on her website. Love, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Okay, here's a couple of pointers to give you some help with toileting. First of all, use cloth. The diapers that we have today are too effective. Children don't even know that they're wet. They don't even know. They're getting no environmental feedback. They have this experience of releasing urine and then they have no sensory feedback that that makes things wet, right? Use cloth, it makes a huge difference in that. The other thing is when you're using cloth, it'll be more obvious when they start to hold it. And once they start to hold it for a couple of hours, that's when they're ready to start toilet training. That usually happens around 18 to 24 months. It varies for different children, but that's generally how it goes. Okay, you can go to Monty Kids and you can order your own toileting kit, right? So you'll have everything you need. You want a little potty, that's their size. Um, You need change of clothing available for them because it's gonna be messy, right? You need cleaning cloths so they can clean themselves and clean up the environment. You need a place for soiled laundry. There's gonna be a lot of soiled laundry, not a problem. And you're gonna need a way for them to empty their potty and clean that out, okay? So we're involving the child in all aspects of using the the potty, right? Changing, dressing, cleaning, everything, all right? We don't want to take away parts of it. So one thing that helps is having a routine when you're first starting out. So first thing upon waking, you say, oh, let's go use the potty. It's first thing. And then you just go and use the potty. After eating, you want to just have it in the routine, use the potty. Because there's a thing that called the gastrocolic reflex that actually makes us want to move our bowels often after eating. Okay, that you'll notice in your children. Maybe you never noticed it in yourself and you'll notice it now. Um, before heading out, you're going to want to use the potty. Before sleeping, you always want to wash your hands after you do. And save pull-ups. If you can switch to cotton, it's so much better. Cloth diapers. Save any pull-ups or disposables for if you're really, you know, for overnights maybe if they're not ready yet or for long car rides, that kind of thing. But don't use it as a regular event. Okay, so here's a great little another Montessori guide video. It's very short. It's just showing you this guide and how she's helping this infant go through the procedure of changing. Now, this infant can't stand, so they're doing a lying down change, and we'll just see what happens. She's got the baby. There's no sound. So slowly she pulls her up, and she tells her, yeah, now I'm going to pick you up. You're all clean, and we're going to wash your hands. And she brings her over. Even though this infant didn't touch anything, They're creating the habit right now of washing the hands right away, okay? Now here's another, this is Hazy and Motherhood. I love Hazy's uh, work on YouTube, a lot of fun things. And here's a little video about how she has been working with her daughter. And you can see her toileting area here. We have this great little potty. There's a million different styles. Find the one that you like. Um, There's something for the dirty cloths. And over here, you can't quite see it, but there's some more environmental cleanup and there's clothing and uh, soiled laundry. So let's see what Hazy can show us here. Again, there's no sound. So she's noticing the potty. And first she's not ready for the potty, but they're doing the standing diaper change. This allows the children to start to participate. Once they're stable standing and starting to use their motor skills a little more, they can participate in the diapering, right? So they know it's not just their servant parent who's, or you know, or caregiver who's gonna do it for them. They'll do the parts that they can. And you can see she can't do everything, but she's doing some things. And now I love this. Here's the poopy diaper. And the poopy diaper doesn't just magically disappear. The poop gets dumped into the toilet, okay? And the child is seeing that ultimately poop goes in the toilet, right? And you flush it. And then you're going to wipe yourself up clean. She's learning how to use everything. Right, and she's throwing it right away there. Maybe you need a little wipe instead of just the other one if it's a little messier. She could use a wipe instead of toilet paper. And then dressing themselves when they're done. So maybe their clothes are still clean, they can put them back on. They might need a little help, they do what they can. And there's the soiled laundry, goes away. And then putting the potty 
into the toilet. So we're cleaning up again. Ultimately, everything goes into the toilet. There you go. Love it. And mom helps. We're not abandoning the children to this. Helps and now helps her so that she can flush. Bye-bye. <laughs> and they have an accessible hand washing area. So always after toileting, going to wash the hands. Okay, so there's a lot of steps we saw in that video. You can go to Hazy and Motherhood and watch uh, her videos yourself. She has explanations which are helpful too. Just plan on things being messy when you first start. And it's not a problem that they're gonna be messy, okay? Because they're first, they're, they're not salient yet. They're not noticing that they need to go. They might be really focused on something else and they forget to toilet. They can't toggle out of that central executive network, right? It's okay, protecting their own concentration is more important. This will develop naturally. And they're gonna have accidents. Things are gonna be messy, especially the first few days. It's gonna be really messy. Just like clear your calendar. Don't plan on going anywhere, right? Just stay home and be ready to, to clean. And, and it's all about the toilet, right? Um, and Hazy likes to give them lots of extra water. So they have lots of experience, lots of opportunities to use the potty. So the thing about the accident is that it's not a problem. We can expect them to happen and we don't have to be concerned about them. It's nothing wrong. You're like, oh, you're wet. That's all. Let's change. And then you help them as needed, show them how to do as much as they can on their own, including cleaning up. It can be really messy when you're first starting. There can be a lot of mess on the floor. Prepare the environments that the children can participate in cleaning up the mess. You're not going to abandon them to do it themselves. You can see in this picture, you've got Hazy and her daughter working together on this, okay? It's not like she's just saying, you go clean it. No, we have to help, okay? But this is the start. We're getting them into the process of it. So why, why this matters so much to me, this not shaming or being upset about a child who has an accident is because of what's actually going on in the brain. And it's stress. An acute stress response is what we're creating. So first of all, typically when our executive system is working well, right, a lot of our activity is in the front of our brain. It's not only in the front of our brain, we need our whole brain to do anything, but a lot of our activity is up here. And that's a calm, alert state. Okay, very happy, brain's working well. Okay, we have an acute stress response. Somebody corrects us, maybe we made a mess and someone goes, oh, you made such a mess. And we're like, oh, and we kind of startle. That's literally, I think, the feeling of this activity leaving the front of our brain and going down into our fight or flight limbic system, right? Amygdala emergency response system. Okay, and that means because that activity has shifted when we have this acute stress response, we're not using the smarter thinking parts of our brain to respond to the situation. We're reactive rather than proactive, right? That's what happens in an acute stress response. So when you think about that, you know that's not a teachable moment. When, if someone is having an acute stress response, then it's like they're having a tantrum. We just need to witness, verbalize what's happening, and be patiently waiting for them to move on so that their brain regulates and can then think again, okay? So those tantrums, those acute stress responses, not teachable moments. Later, the teaching, the guidance from Montessori is to wait for a neutral moment later and then represent whatever it is that they need support in understanding what is happening. But it's not necessarily the same day. The neutral moment is a different time so that it's not connected with the, with the stress response, okay? Stress is such a big deal because actually it alters our memory formation and our ability to retrieve memories. There's so many effects of stress in the brain, and this is just one of them. So we really do not want to be creating acute stress responses in the young child as much as we can. And then if you're interested in looking deeper on anything, there's a bazillion references here. I always want you to be able to follow up and see uh, the data behind what was presented. Okay, I hope this was useful. Good luck.